Alright, this is Silver Surfman Annual Number 2. And this is the first part of the SeaWorld Attacks crossover. Or, as I wrongly used to call it in videos, Atlantis Attacks. I have done loads of videos about this storyline. I looked at the Omnibus, I think that was the first one I did. I flipped through the Omnibus, gave a quick recap of the story. Then I looked at the What If issue, which is brilliant. And I also looked at one of the Avengers issues, where they fought like the Big Bad, the Evil Serpent God. And I have looked at little bits of related stuff like prequels or Aftermath. But I thought I would look at this one more in depth. Because I only briefly looked at it in the Omnibus video. But I thought I would give a better look at the comic. I kind of really just succinctly went out of the plot. And I think I pointed out the one element of this issue that I really hate. So hopefully this video will offer more. This is written by Steve Engeltine. That is I Love Comics' dad. And the art is by Ron Lee, that is Stanley Lee's little brother. We start off with a celestial, one of the big robot cosmic gods. And that's enticing, isn't it? But it doesn't really have any relevance to the rest of the story. The Silver Surf Man, he is surfing in space. That's kind of what he does. And then Summit telekinetically starts controlling his surfing board, like controlling and piloting his surfing board and he decides to just gun along with it and see where it takes him and it takes him to like a big cosmic fart which turns out to be the villain gore he was trapped in a big pile of cosmic gas and the silver surf man has released him we get a quick catch up on gore how he was a priest from Apocalypse, and how he became a Celestial, and how he was defeated in the New Gods comic that I reviewed, where they transformed him into a cosmic fart. And the rest of the issue is Silver Surfman fighting Gore. It's a pretty big cosmic fight in space. It's, it's what you'd expect, really. Two characters... Floating around in outer space, shooting lasers at each other. And then Gore, he decides that he is outclassed. He realises that the Silver Surf Man is probably more powerful than him. So he runs away like a big coward. Now we have got the part of the story that I hate. This, this single page, really. This is what I pointed out in my look at the Omnibus. This is terrible. Silver Surf Man who is responsible for awakening Gore, he just decides that it's not his problem anymore, that he shouldn't go after Gore and stop him, that he's just going to let Gore go to Earth and someone from Earth can stop him. And this is just, this is terribly out of character, like enormously so. Uh, Silver Surf Man, he isn't in a crossover anymore. Uh, Gore, he gans to Earth, and he gans to Sea World, and he meets the Sea Men, and he teams up with a sexy, sexy, sexy Sea Queen who is really sexy. He breaks her out of Sexy Sea Man prison, and they decide that they're going to use the Serpent Crown. They're going to use the Serpent Crown. It's like a hat that you put on your head. They're going to use that to try and bring the evil Serpent God to Earth. Then we get another recap here, telling us some of the history of the Serpent Crown. And considering that for this whole crossover, one of the backup stories is a 14-part, very thorough history of the Serpent Crown. This is pretty pointless. But here we see how it was made in the Arden days. And how it was in a bunch of Avengers stories and Fantastic Four stories. Uh, and then we're back with the Silver Surf Man. And he's thinking some more about how he isn't going to go and help the Earth or stop go. This is kind of just hammering home the point that he's really, really out of character. 
But then we have the bits that I love in crossovers, where we see the Marvel Universe reacting to something big and cosmic happening. First, we have got Doctor Strange. He senses something and he's like, oh, something big and cosmic is happening. And then we have got Shaman or Shaman from Alpha Strike. Uh, never really learned the correct way to say that word. And I'm not going to learn now. But she senses something and she's like, oh, something big and cosmic is happening. And then finally, we have the big celestial robot who senses something big and cosmic is happening. It's meant to pretend like it actually had some merit to the story, like it actually meant something. It was at the start and then the end. It's meant to trick you into thinking that it's that's important or it's like some some depth or something. Then we have got the backups. Uh, this one is simple. It's all about Silver Surf Man's powers and how they work. And it's actually really boring to read. It is genuinely more interesting to read like the block of text describing his powers in one of the Marvel handy books. A nice profile shot of him there though. Uh, next we've got, this is him doing a power ranking thing, talking about the other powerful peoples in the Marvel Universe that he has met. We've got like Doctor Strange and Doctor X and Anthony Hopkins, Big Baby in a Nappy, Satan, Mr. Doom, uh, Death, Internity, Galactus Man, and of course Engeltine puts in his pet little character Willow. She had to appear in this comic somewhere, this stupid little flower girl who he is obsessed with. And I want to read this out just so you can bask in the fucking feverish wanton that he is doing out of this bin. Willow. Born to humble surroundings in the midst of endless war. She had the great good fortune. Couldn't just have good fortune, could she? She had to have great good fortune. To be chosen by the priests of Panorama. To be readied for contact with an alien race. Ooh... It gets fucking worse. This next bit's terrible. Uh, it made it made me fucking seethe. Hated and despised by those who could never equal or even understand her. And now lost forever in this universe. By which he means she's appearing over in Fantastic Force comics written by him instead of Silver Surfman. She remains a shining star in the star-spangled heavens. <laughs> oh, God, that is awful. That's really, really bad writing. Dreadful. Uh, I mean, he just says out here that Dr. X from The Excellent Men, he has got a good brain. But Willow gets a fucking... Willow is amazing. She is the sun and, and the stars and, and the moon and all the stuff in between all rolled up into one. But, but but the man, she's hated and despised by the man. Uh, the man is trying to keep her down. Uh, and by that, he probably means the comic book editors who rightfully keep telling him to stop with this nonsense bullshit about some stupid hippie lass who is destined for greatness that never fucking comes. Then we have got, this is an informal tour of the universe, uh, which sounds a lot more fun than it is. And this really is more of a Fantastic Force backup story, because he's got Mr. Fantasticals, he's talking to his little son, Mr. Fantasticals Jr., telling him all about the universe... Uh, then Galactus Man, he gobbles up a planet. Uh, then we have got another story, and this one stars one of the Villians from Engeltine's run. Uh, I was hoping he would be on this page so I could explain him. This character, he is called Reptilia, and he is just a goofy character. Uh, in the run after this one, they transformed him into, like, a big, scary monster, like... 
a super strong lizard oak sort of thing and that was that was much better but then Engeltine came back and just reverted him to being this silly looking cartoon lizard man and then our final backup story this one is all about Satan he tricks someone because that's what Satan does etc it's very short uh, then we do have the final one. This is The History of the Serpent Crown. This is by Marky Mark Griswold with some really early art by Mark Bagels. And this is part one. It's like at the Big Bang of the universe. Very, very ambitious stuff. But none of these History of the Serpent Crown parts really work independent from the other 13 chapters. Uh, there, there's the God that lives in the sun. Uh, you know, that one that I have been saying that I'm going to review his first appearance of for, well, probably a year now, like, since I started this channel, and I still haven't done it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll 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 do it one day. I I swear. Uh, this is a weird comic to review. I I didn't really know what to say. Uh, I was thinking, gunning into this, I was thinking that it was gonna be positive. Then, then I actually read it, and there is problems almost every step of the way. Uh, we've got good art. Ron Lee, Stanley Lee's little brother, great artist. Uh, it's 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 mostly a good start for the crossover, but uh, just that bit with Silver Surfman giving up and not being interested in stop and go. That's it's just really annoying. It's so out of character. Uh, the backup stories are they're between annoying and boring. Um, I'll just rate it on the back of the main story, which um, it's about 90% serviceable and 10% shit. So that adds up to a nice round seven thumbs up.